When I started using Next.js for the first time, I had such a hard time with the Next image. It was frustrating. But with time, I understood the power of it and how useful it actually is. One of its main strengths is the visual stability. And that's why it's so hard to use at first, because it actually solves a really big problem, which is the layout shifts. And since we are filling the space while the images are loading, to avoid any layout shifts, it's very important to become a master of placeholders. We're gonna take a look at different use cases for static images. We're gonna take a look at two different blurs and a color placeholder. On the other side, for dynamic images, we're also gonna take a look at a blur and a color placeholder. And finally, we're gonna take a look at two custom implementations and see how we can animate a placeholder when it comes inside of the view. All right, so I have the starter application here, a very simple Next.js application, and I've created a components folder and inside of it, we're gonna take a look at every single implementation. The first three ones will be implementations that use static images. So I have the components, inside of it I have the static, and then I have the default, and I have another blur and a color. But now let's start with the default implementation here. I'm gonna import here the default blur component, and I'm gonna go get it here from the static and default blur, and then I can grab the component and put it inside of the images here. And like I said, for the default blur, it requires a static import for it to work. So I'm going to statically import an image here i'm gonna call it picture and i'm gonna fetch it here it's in the public folder in the images and then i have the picture.jpg and then i can simply give that picture as a source to the component and now i can go inside of that component and start working on it i'm going to create a react component here and here i'm just gonna call it a container and then inside of it, I'm just going to have here a little title just so we don't get lost inside all of our implementations. And then I'm going to have here a division. I'm going to call it the image container. And then here I can have the next image and I can go ahead here and import the image from next image. And now that image, I'm going to do that the source here is the picture that we've given as props. So we have the source here and then I'll use the fill property. And by doing that, I'm forcing the image to fill its parent. And so in the styling, I can go ahead in the image container and choose a width and a height and the image will adjust itself. And then I also need an alt here. I'm just going to call it image. And then I just need to import the styles here. And by the way, in the styles, I've just defined here for the image container, a width and a height and the position relative. And that's needed because we used the fill property on the image and so the parent absolutely needs to be in position relative or absolute and it needs a width and a height for it to work and i've also put an object fit cover so that the image is now covering its parent and now to really see what's going on i'm gonna have to throttle my network here and just put it slower and by doing that when i refresh my page i can actually see the loading process and that's going to help us to really see the effect of the placeholders and how actually effective they are and so here we have no placeholders just a next image really basic and i'm going to refresh and you're going to see that it's loading here and while it's loading i don't see anything at least i don't have any layout shift but still have like this weird blank space before it appears and that's what we're trying to solve with placeholders and so for the default blur all we have to do here is specify in the placeholder that we want a blur. Very simple like that. And as long as we have a statically imported image like this, it's gonna work. However, if I just take this path here and I give it as the source like this, it won't work anymore. We absolutely need to statically import that image. And so next can know at runtime what to do to create the blur. And now I can try this out. I'm gonna refresh. And I can see that I have a blur while the image is loading. And that's basically the power of placeholders. We can see that we have a very low res image that's loaded at first. That's 1.1 KB. And so this one is loaded first and shown to the user. And then the real image, which is 45 KB in that case, is then shown. And so that really helps for a good UX. So that was it for the basic implementation of the blur with Next. This is the default that they give us. And this is the easiest one that we can implement. But personally, it kind of itches me that we have to always do those statically imported images and sometimes we want to have something different than a blur maybe we want to have a color effect where we grab the most prominent color of the image and that's what is shown as a placeholder that's really nice too but it's not possible to do that by default and so we're going to use a library called placeholder and with that library it's going to enable us to create also a blur effect but it's going to be slightly different and we also won't have to statically import the image to use it and we're also going to create a color effect which is really nice so for that i'll go ahead here and copy paste that and i'll do static import with placeholder here and then I'm going to import here the static placeholder blur. And we're going to start with the blur here. And I'm just going to grab it in the components static placeholder blur. And I'm going to take it here. And for this one, the source, it doesn't have to be a statically imported images. So I can simply do images and then I can get my picture here, JPEG. And then we can go inside of the blur component inside of the placeholder folder and we can start working on that component. But we need a bit of configuration to actually be able to use the placeholder. The first thing we need here is to install the library. So we can do 
npm installed placeholder and it's like placeholder but with an i it's a bit weird and then we also need to install the placeholder next plugin so we can go ahead here and do npm install and i'm going to do at placeholder slash next and here we can import the placeholder from placeholder and now we can actually use this function to create our placeholders but we also need to do one more thing and it's to go inside of the next config here so first we need to import with placeholder from the placeholder next plugin and here instead of doing the module exports equal next config we're going to do export default with placeholder of the next config like this and we can save that and the last thing here is instead of having a js file we need to have an mjs file and with that we are properly configured to use the placeholder and with that we have properly configured the next app to use the placeholder library so i can go back in the component here and start working with it so i'm going to use the same structure as the default blur here so i'm just going to copy paste to save a bit of time and here i have my image and i'm going to do the same thing placeholder blur and i have my source here as props but now what i'm gonna do here is give a custom blur data url and what that means is i'm giving my own data about what i want as a placeholder instead of taking the default next just blur so i can do blur data url here now i'm gonna specify something so the first thing here is we need to get the get placeholder from the placeholder library and we're also going to change our function here to have an asynchronous function so we can use the await and here i need to create a buffer because the placeholder function here is expecting to have a buffer and the buffer is just the data of the image if you're curious and so to get that data of the image i can do an await function and to read the data of the image i need to grab the file system module from node and now we're working in node.js because all of this code is actually running in server side it's not running client side right if it's running client side it would be inside of a use effect hook but now we're directly putting our code inside of the function and so it's going to run server side and that's why we can use the file system from node.js here so i'm going to await a file system and i'm going to do read file and here i can read the public folder and i can append my source that i gave and the source is actually here the backslash images the picture.jpg so i'm taking that and that way i can effectively read the file and once i have the buffer i can actually extract here the base 64 which is the blurred image which is going to be equal to an await function again of the get placeholder function and i'm going to give it the buffer and then i can grab the base 64 and give it as the blur data url and i can save that Ooh, and here i just need to import the styles again and also import the image from next image and if i refresh i have the image here now of course we're not seeing the placeholder because my network is really fast so i'm going to go here in the network and i'm just going to throttle my network so we can actually see what's going on and i'm going to refresh here and you can see that i have the blur and that blur looks a bit different than the default of next.js that's because the placeholder library they add like a bit of their own like saturation and contrast and all of that which you can tweak if you're interested but i'm just going to take the default one for now and yeah if i refresh i have the blur and then i have the image that appears so that's good and now what if we don't want to use a blur maybe we don't like the effect maybe we don't like the look of it maybe we just want to use a color so we can actually do that with the placeholder library and so i'm going to go back here in the page js and i'm going to import the static placeholder but i'm going to do color and i'm just going to import here inside of the static placeholder and i'm going to grab the color component and then i'll take it and i'll put it here inside of the static import with placeholder and then same thing i'll take the source give it here and the implementation of the color is really really similar to the blur and that's great i'm just going to copy paste the blur component put it inside of the color component and so it's exactly the same thing i'm just going to change the title here to color and here we're not going to use a blur we're going to use a color right so i'm just going to take off those two properties and here instead of extracting the base 64 from the placeholder i'm just going to extract the color and then inside of the image container i can actually give some style and i can do background color and i can do the color and that color has either the rgb values or hex code and i'm going to grab the hex code and i can save that and i can go back here if i save it goes really fast because of my network so again i'm going to throttle that network and then i can try this out and if i refresh that you can see that the placeholder is grabbing the color from the image which is kind of a light green in the case of this image and it looks like that and then boom the image appears and so that's another effect possible with the placeholder library well and honestly it's really useful i would put one or the other in like every single website but sometimes i also use a custom implementation which we'll see later on but yeah those are basically three cases for statically imported images and we're going to move on now but we're going to use dynamic images because sometimes you use an image that comes from a database from your headless cms or from a server whatever right you don't have the image statically in your project it happens very often and that's why i've created two implementations using the placeholder library for dynamic images so i'm going to go in the page yes here and i'm going to create another section and i'm going to call it dynamic image import with placeholder and so I can go here and import the dynamic placeholder blur from and I'm just going to grab the components here from the dynamic folder the blur and then I can take it and put it here and for the source of the image like we said we're going to use dynamic images so I'm just going to put here as a source 
an images that's actually hosted on, on Splash. And I can show you guys here. I'm just going to copy paste the URL here. And here we can see that we have this image that's hosted on a server. And that's going to work fine for our case here. And then I can start working on the dynamic blur component here. I'm going to go in the static placeholder, the blur. I'm going to copy paste this. And now obviously this logic here doesn't make any more sense because, well, the file is not static. So we can't really use the file system to read the file. It just won't work. So I'm just going to delete that line here. And I need to find another way to create the buffer of the image. And it's also going to be pretty simple. I can have here a buffer, which is going to be equal to an await function. And we're going to use a fetch and we're just going to fetch the source. And after that fetch has been done, we have the result and I can have a function here and I can return and I can use the buffer interface here and I can do a from and I'm just going to use an await inside of it and I can use the res and do the array buffer method. Oh, and here it's not happy. I need to have an async function here and easily like that. I have my buffer from a fetch function and the same way I use that buffer inside of the get placeholder function. I extract the base 64 and I put the base 64 here as the blur data URL and I do the placeholder is a blur. Same thing as the static function but my implementation for the buffer has changed slightly and I can actually delete the file system and I can save that, save that here. And now Next.js is not happy because it's not detecting the host, which is the images on splash.com, right? It comes from a server and Next.js doesn't know it. And we always need to do that when we use images that come from a server. So I can go in the next config here and it's quite simple here. I can have the images and specify that they come from certain domains and I can have an array here and put the domain that's specified here, the images on splash.com and I can save that. And then I just need to restart the app because I changed the configs and now it's running here i have my dynamic import i have the image that comes from the server and then i'm just going to throttle my network throttle that and i'm going to refresh and here we can see that we have the blur which is basically the same thing as this one you can see that the saturation and the contrast is very similar but it's a different image so obviously the blur is different and the good news now is it's dynamic so that's really nice and then we're going to do the same thing for the static import with placeholder with the color but now we're going to do it dynamically so i'm just here in the page js and i'm just going to import the dynamic placeholder and i have the color and i grab the color here and i can take it and i'm just going to put it inside of that section take the source give it and inside of the color component here i'm just going to copy paste the blur like i did before copy paste but now instead of taking the base 64 i'm going to take the color from the placeholder method and then i'm going to remove the placeholder here and i can add some styling background color and i'm going to do color and i'm going to target the hex and i can save that save this one too and i can go back here throttle my network and i can see here that i have the color that's extracted from the image and it's shown before the image is loading. So that's really nice. And with that, we're basically done with the placeholders. We have a bunch of different cases depending on your situation. And the last two I want to take a look at is personally, those implementations are nice. They are fine and they are really functional. That's the term I like to use. They are functional, but I personally like to put form over function sometimes. So I'm going to create two custom animations that will also solve the problem of filling the image while it's loading, but it's going to be animated. And so personally, I prefer that as always. So again, I'm just going to copy paste that section. I'm going to create another section. I'm going to call it custom in view animations. I'm just going to delete that here. And the first one I want to create is an opacity animation. Very simple one, easiest to do. I'm going to import here the custom opacity and I'm just going to import the component here and then I can grab it, put it here. And the good news about custom implementation is it doesn't matter if it's dynamic or static. It's going to work for both of those cases. So I'm just going to use dynamic for now. And then I'm just going to go inside of the custom opacity component here. And then I can just copy paste one just to have the structure here. And I'm just going to clean it up i don't need anything about those placeholders and here i have the opacity and i'm just going to save that okay and now i have my custom in view animations and i have my opacity here for now it's just an image and if i throttle my network you're going to see that we have this problem of not seeing anything before the image loaded so for the opacity what i'm going to do is manually add a background color so the user actually sees something while the image is loading so here i can add some styling i'm going to have a background color and i have a certain color that i chose here and i can save that and if i refresh i have a color here that's filled before the image comes. And now what I wanna do is while I'm scrolling, when the image comes inside of the view, I want to make the image appear on top of the background color with an opacity animation. So to do that, the first thing we gotta do is find a way to detect when the image comes inside of the view. And I'm gonna use the React Intersection Observer to do that. So I can go ahead here and install that library and it's called the React Intersection Observer. And then I can go here and then I can import here the use in view hook from the React Intersection Observer. And that hook returns us two things. One is the ref and the other one is a Boolean called in view. And that is equal to the use in view. And I'm gonna do trigger once, meaning that function will only get triggered once. 
and that in view here will be false at the beginning and true when the image comes inside of the view and then it will it will stop it won't become false when the image comes outside of the view because we don't want to do exit animation for now so that's why i have trigger once and i'm going to do a threshold of 0.5 meaning i'm going to wait until the ref that i'm going to specify here is 50 percent visible inside of the screen before that in view becomes true so I can have here a ref and I can give the ref here to the image container. And then it's going to be pretty simple. I'm going to add some custom styling to the image. You could put that inside of the CSS if you'd like. I'm just going to do inline for now, just for the simplicity of it. And then I can target the opacity and I can say, is it in view? If it is, it should have an opacity of one, else it should be invisible. And to have a proper animation, I'm going to add a transition. And here I can add a transition that targets the opacity 0.2 second with a custom cubic Bezier easing. And I can save that. And now this use in view hook is a client side hook. So I need to specify here that I'm on the client and I'm going to refresh and I'm just going to take off the async function here because it's not yet supported inside of client functions. And if I refresh this, I have my image that's appearing. And here there's a typo inside of my transition. I'm just going to fix it at 0.2 seconds. I don't know what happened. I think I, I think I made a typo here. And now if I refresh the page, I can see that I have a background. And when it comes inside of the view, it animates. Now it's inside of the view in the beginning here. So I'm just going to change the wind, the size of the window and put it outside of the view. And I'm going to test this. So I'm going to just going to refresh. And I'm just going to scroll. And we can see that when I scroll in, the opacity animation gets triggered. And you can see that it waits until it's visible by 50% before being triggered. So I'm just going to scroll and you're going to see that it appears after 50%. So that's really good. And you're going to see here, the caveat with those types of animation is we're not using the blur and the placeholder from Next.js. So it's a bit less powerful. And you're going to see it when I start throttling my browser here, I'm going to refresh and you're going to see that it takes a much longer time before actually being triggered because the image is getting loaded fully before the animation gets triggered. So that's one problem of it. But to me, it's still fine. When I'm throttling my browser here, it, it's still showing something. So this is definitely a case of form over function. But on regular networks, it really does the job. You can see that it looks really nice. And it's quite a popular effect that we can see in a lot of like awards winning websites. So yeah, that was it for the custom in view opacity animation. And we're going to take a look at another custom animation, which will be a slide animation. So inside of the page just here, I'm just going to import the custom slide component. And I'm just going to grab it from the custom folder and I can take this, put it here and I can grab the source, same thing. And then inside of the slide component, I'm just gonna copy paste here the opacity, the custom opacity, paste this. And here, same thing, I'm gonna use the use in view from the React Intersection Observer to check when the image comes inside of the view. But now I'm just gonna remove the background from the image container here. And for the styling here, I'm gonna remove the transition because I don't want to animate the opacity, but I'm still gonna put the image invisible at first when it's not in view. And here I'm gonna add an extra division that I'm gonna call like background. And I can add some styling here in line for now. And actually I don't need a class name, I'm just gonna do the styling in line. And here the first thing I'm gonna add is a background color, right? That's really important. It's what the user is going to see at first when the image is loading. And I'm going to put the color here and then I can add a couple of other things. One is I want to have a width of 100% and the height of 100%. And so that background is taking the full height and the full width of the image container. And if I want that to effectively work, I need actually to put that div inside of the image container here. So it's going to be on the same level as the image. And if I want that background to be on top of the image, I'm going to put it in position relative with a Z index of one. And I can do top zero. And I'm also going to add a transition here but instead of transitioning the opacity i'm going to transition the left property and here i can have a left at the beginning i'm going to have a left of zero so i can check if it's in view i'd like to have a left of a certain position and when it's not i want to have zero and so when it's in view i basically want the background to be sliding all the way out so i'm going to do left 100 and if it's not inside of the view I want to have the left at 0%, so on top of the image. And I can save this and let's see if this works. I have the background here and it slides away, but now obviously it looks a bit weird. So I'm just gonna add an overflow hidden on the image container. So just some styling here with an overflow hidden. And if I refresh this, I have my slide animation. So I have a background and the image gets revealed when it comes inside of the view. I'm just gonna put it a bit smaller so we can see it in action. When it comes inside of the view, we can see the animation gets triggered. I'm gonna do it again, I'm gonna do slower. And like the opacity animation, it waits until it's 50% visible and then it's gonna get animated. So yeah, that was basically it for this video. I hope you learned something. Personally, I really love the next image. It's really powerful and it helps for a lot of cases. At the beginning, it was hard for me to use it, but when I got used to it, I understood its power. So I hope you learned something. If you liked it, leave a like, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.